in today's video, we're going to be talking about a legal doctrine called Chevron deference. And you may have heard this term bandied about in the media recently. The Supreme Court has announced it will take up a case next term that could potentially strip federal agencies of some of their powers. The case, Loper Enterprises versus Raimondo, seeks to overturn a nearly 40-year-old legal precedent known as Chevron deference. It directs courts to defer to federal agencies when interpreting unclear laws. The Chevron deference has been targeted by conservatives and they believe it gives too much power to agencies and the executive branch. Now, this is going to have dramatic implications, not just for all executive regulatory agencies, but also to the ATF. And it is going to seriously limit what the ATF can do. All right, so first off, let's talk about what the executive agencies have done since the beginning of Chevron deference and what Chevron deference e even is. So as many of you probably know, we've talked about this before, rules, laws, statutes, things like that are supposed to be created in the legislature. In this particular context, we're talking about the United States Congress. They are the ones, consistent with the way that the framers developed the Constitution, that actually create laws. And there's a very specific reason for this. Every single law that exists on the books is, by definition, a restriction on individual liberty. And every single framer that was present at the time of the ratification of the Constitution understood that the singular purpose of government was to protect individual liberty, all right? So by putting the rulemaking authority in the legislature, it now requires elected representatives to begin political bargaining. Now, the theory is that every single time someone wants to come up with a regulation or a law, it's going to require somebody else to buy off on it and by definition, the least restrictive law will ultimately get passed or nothing will get passed, right? Every single law, like I said, is a restriction on individual liberty. Now, to give you this in sort of like a broader context, right? You have a law that says, you know, you can't commit murder. Okay, well, we all would probably agree that that's a, probably a pretty good idea for a society to function. However, by definition, that is a restriction on your individual liberty. After all, if I'm not legally allowed to go commit murder, that's an action that I can't take. Now, we like that because it allows society to function. But when we move away from murder, and let's say we get into something like building a home, right? If there is a statute that says you can only use Reading pipe when building a home, then by definition, that's a restriction on your individual liberty if you wanted to use some other company's pipe to build the home for your plumbing, okay? That is by definition that restriction. So by placing it in the legislature, you reduce the possibility that you'll get these really granular laws that restrict our individual liberty. But something happened. All right, there was a Supreme Court case called Chevron versus Natural Defense Resource Council. This happened about 20 some odd years ago. And in that Supreme Court case, which uh, candidly, I think the Supremes got completely wrong, they said that if Congress does not explicitly regulate something, then an executive agency can come up with their own rulemaking as long as that rulemaking is reasonable. So if Congress creates a law that says thou shalt not do something and the executive agency comes up with a regulation that says you must do something and that's completely contrary, then the legislative law is going to, you know, uh, it's going to be supreme. It's going to control. But what happens if Congress didn't get involved at all? 
Well, then the executive agency comes up with a whole bunch of rules. And according to the Supreme Court and the Chevron deference, if there's lack you know, of, of legislative enactment on, from Congress, then the executive rulemaking is controlling law. This is problematic for two reasons. Number one, one of the reasons why Congress may not have got involved is that it didn't have the political will to get involved. They might have thought about it, but they realized that they couldn't secure the votes in order to create the legislation. Well, by transferring this power to an executive agency, you now have non-elected bureaucrats effectively coming up with law, all right? And people's livelihoods as well as potentially even their freedom can be implicated because of these rules. Now, this hasn't been just simply relegated to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. And we all see that on a regular basis. I mean, everything from the frame and receiver rule to the pistol brace rule, these are not laws that Congress drafted. These are rather rules that unelected bureaucrats at the ATF came up with. And people could find themselves potentially in jail for violating rules that were created by unelected bureaucrats. Okay guys, I'm pausing this video right now to talk about a special giveaway that USCCA is doing. It's incredibly cool, but it is ending soon. So you're gonna wanna click on the description below this video to find out all about it. You're definitely gonna wanna take part. Well, there is another case that is about to go before the Supreme Court. It's called Looper Bright Enterprises versus Ramondo. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the Second Amendment. It actually has to deal with a bunch of fishermen, okay, and some requirements that they've had that deal with uh, having monitors on board to protect against overfishing of certain uh, fishing populations. We won't go into the details of the case, but they're challenging Chevron deference. And the Supreme Court appears to be poised to overturn their original ruling on Chevron. And this is going to have massive implications, not just for our community in the Second Amendment, but pretty much across the entire board. And you're going to start seeing over the next few months a lot of these YouTube videos and other talking heads and lawyers on television and things like that talking about this. You're also going to see a lot of what I would call, you know, collectivists, people that believe that the government needs to control minute aspects of our individual lives. And they're going to be screaming that we need to maintain Chevron deference because Congress simply doesn't have the expertise nor the time to be involved in all these minute functions and things like that. You know, Alex de Tocqueville, when he wrote his big treatise on American democracy, said that the, the America is going to inevitably develop a bureaucratic structure where free enterprise and personal freedoms are essentially restricted because of an overarching bureaucracy that individuals are simply not going to be able to do anything without running afoul of the law. And as a result of that, they're going to become resistant to taking risk. And that seems to be what our society has developed into. I mean, I think Alex de Tocqueville was, uh, was prescient, you know, back in the early 1800s when he saw this inevitable development. Um, what's also interesting is that as the United States has, you know, inexorably moved closer and closer towards this idea of sort of collectivist control over all aspects of individual freedom, uh, we're starting to see in Europe the exact opposite taking place, uh, specifically with places like Spain and Italy, where you're starting to see a movement towards a reemergence of individual liberty and perhaps 
uh, we are now starting to take our cues from them. In any event, this ultimate ruling that we get in Looper Bright Enterprises is going to directly affect our ability to exercise our Second Amendment rights because many, if not all of the rules that the ATF has come up with, along with uh, the IRS and the Department of the Interior, and you know, I mean, all literally every executive agency is going to be fundamentally curtailed. It's also going to put politicians that are in the legislative branch that are actually elected politicians effectively on the hook. They're going to have to take the political risk in coming up with legislation that in fact restricts our individual liberty and then they themselves will be subject to electoral recall. Uh, this is exactly what the framers had originally envisioned and um, hopefully we'll be returning to that, that rubric in, uh, in June, early July when this particular court case is ultimately decided and we receive our opinion. Until then, if you would like to email me, you certainly can. You can do so at stephen at artemishq.com. And as always, train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe. Before you go, you just missed one of our best videos that got over a half a million views. Click right here to watch it now.